Hello everybody, Scorch Artist here back again with another video. Yes, this is the second video of the series of five videos on basically analyzing comic books and uh, figuring out really what works and what doesn't work and how we can maximize what works and minimize what doesn't work in our own comic books and in our own lives. So this, this video is all about your choice of frame. Now what is choice of frame? Choice of frame is basically, um, it's these things. And what do, what these things are more important than just boxes. They're also your, your camera and your angles and your position and your balancing of scenes and the way that you portray the information that is inside very accurately. So you really wanna pay attention to these things because this is what the reader sees your world through. And if you really know how to work these things to your advantage, you will have a very clear um, comic book. Um, the objective is always to achieve lots of clarity and lots of communication um, as, as well as possible. So um, there's only a couple ways to achieve a good choice of frame. And there is not like the last video where it's like there's things you can go over. It's more of things that you can do. So I'm going to delve right into basically um, what I do, I have done in this 10 page comic book here that I submitted to a contest a while back to achieve basically uh, good clarity through framing. So I'm gonna hop right into it. This very first page, which is the second page of the comic book, shows a character head on and it's kind of like an establishing character shot. Now why do I show this? If you remember from the last video, which link will be up there, um, the characters were down here walking into the scene. You didn't really have a clear view of them. So with this choice of, of excuse me, frame, I show exactly the, who the characters are and what they are and show that they are important. I also, with this angle, I stop some of the momentum. So when it comes down to your choice of frame, you really want to pay attention to, okay, what am I trying to what am I trying to say here right because that will decide whether you show the character from a front on angle or you show them from a side angle or you show another character's half of his face and you zoom into like his eye or something like that what you're trying to express really dictates what you need to show here I want to show who these these characters are somewhat important and they're of emphasis so I made them of emphasis I literally they are the biggest panel um, on the page and they are full frontal walking directly at you so you know they are important unlike this person who is walking away from you no full frontal so therefore they are not important you get the message the very next thing here is I show Adrian's eyes now why do I show his eyes I show his eyes because of this I show he is curious as to who these people are, right? You want to, remind, want to remember from your choice of moment that each panel should be communicating something, right? You don't want to have panels that are there for no reason, and you want to have your panels built in a way that if you were to erase one, the further panels wouldn't really make much sense. So what I do by showing his eyes, right, his eyes only because that's all I need to show is that he's curious, right? That's what I wanted to, what I, that's what I wanted to communicate. The very next thing here is I think it's pretty interesting that I show the characters walking in, right? You may not think it's that interesting, but what I think is pretty interesting about this is that when, this is a more of a choice of flow thing, but it's, it's done also in the images and your, uh, your angles. And that is when you're reading, let's say, Western, uh, Western society, or yeah, I guess Western society, uh, books are read from right to, well, I wouldn't have this, but books are read from right to or left to right, meaning that you start up here and then you go this way as opposed to an Eastern societies where books are read from left or wait, yeah, right to left. So that <laughs> I'm all confused here, right to left so that the, the things are going this way. And what that means is that when you have pictures in the panel that are going the opposite way of what your readers are, are accustomed to, they slow down on that panel. If even so slightly, they do do it because they're going in the, the, the characters are moving in the opposite direction than they are accustomed to. So a good idea is that you want to, if you want to speed up the pace of a story, you have a lot of panels facing in basically the general direction of the reader's view. If you want to slow down the pace of a story a little bit, you put panels facing in the opposite direction of the reader's typical way of reading because then they, they kind of stop on it and they go, oh, they without realizing it, they're, they're slowing down at that point. So I wanted to show that they were, they were important. I kind of wanted to slow it down. So I showed them at this angle as opposed to full frontal or from behind or something of that nature. 
The next thing is I zoomed in on Adrian's ear, right? Now I could have shown my original panel here was essentially this panel, but from a different angle, right? It was kind of like the top of their heads and it was kind of showing that they were sitting down or something. And I decided to remove that panel last minute and instead show Adrian's ear. Now this is a, this is really good for your choice of frame because your choice of frame allows you to use uh, your camera basically, let's imagine you're a, a filmmaker, use your camera and really zoom in on different areas of the scene that are important. Right, and I wanted to show that Adrian is kind of hearing what they're saying, so I zoomed in on his ear and the fact that he was listening. Now, if I had cut this panel out completely and went down to this panel, it wouldn't it would be it would be less effective than if you had known that Adrian was at first curious and then listening and then now he's sitting directly next to them. So or they are sitting directly next to him. So it communicates a lot in very little panels by simply choosing what's the most important thing and what panel or what direction or what zoom or what you know crop am I using that best communicates that. Because I could have shown more of Adrian's head, right? But that wouldn't communicate it as well as just showing his ear. So uh, the very next thing here is something I used um, Basically, it's your choice of frame, and I used it the entire time. But here, you can see it kind of prevalent, or yeah, it's it's kind of it's kind of prominent here, and that's that there's a really big balance between the two characters of the scene. This is your composition here. So, um, when you are seeing this character, right, you're reading, and you go down to the left, and then you read to the right. You're seeing this person is like a, a certain size in the scene. They're doing something, and you look over here, and Adrian is also of the same size. Now you don't reason this, you know, consciously. When I, most of what happens in a comic book is not done consciously when the reader is reading it, but it's all subconscious. But basically what happens is these two characters are now on equal footing. And you may think it's kind of ridiculous to go into that much detail when you're thinking of your comic book, but keep in mind, all of your details matter, right? So when you're making a comic book, every single little detail matters because each one of those panels has a certain effect. And the comic books that are the most effective have the most effective panel structure and things of that nature. Not that there's any one formula you can use or anything, but they definitely put some thought into each panel. I remember reading um, in, a, in a book by uh, Katsuhiro Otsuma who did Akira. He, he has like a, a, a couple of pages in this book, this art book, and he's basically going over like talking about how he used to go over these panels and he has like this sketchbook picture and it's like 30 different drawings of like the same panel right so you really want to and he's a very successful artist so you can see how this you know translates you really want to pay attention to what's important because if not you could end up putting things that aren't important like let's say two characters sitting and then you know if i did that here this would have less of an effect so it's kind of like zooming in and zooming out. You want to zoom in, zoom out, zoom in, zoom out, and doing things like that and really paying attention to the relation from panel to panel uh, gives a sense of contrast and a sense of depth and really keeps the readers in the story, right? Like deep in the story as opposed to outside really being confused. The next thing here is this panel again. I use the same technique, kind of like a balancing thing, sending your eye from okay, 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 okay. And it kind of uh, it kind of connects these two characters, having this balance between them. It connects this character to this character by having two panels where they're kind of on equal footing in the scene. The next here is the same thing I did on this page, and that is to show them full frontal to kind of stop the momentum of the scene. Here's another thing I did. So when you're, when you're thinking of your panel structure, you want to think of it in terms of of your camera angle, right? Uh, as Scott McCloud puts it, you you are basically your frame is basically like your camera. And you're putting the reader and you're telling them like look here this is what you're looking at and what you're kind of dictating what the reader sees as important in the scene so you really want to make sure you're picturing only what's important here I only show his arm because that's only what's important and I show it from kind of an above angle you're kind of looking down at him and why is that because it kind of gives you the sense of eavesdropping which is exactly what Adrian is doing you can show this scene let's say it's just like him like that and he's sitting down it wouldn't be as effective um, at least it wouldn't be as interesting. Um, it might still work, but it might not be. It won't be as interesting as showing it from this angle. And you really want to be. You really want to understand why you're showing each angle, right? Another thing too is that uh, this only calls for okay. Let's let's look at his arm. Let's look at this this piece on his wrist. Let's look let's look at what he's doing, right? And that guides why I'm showing it, right? I'm not going to show him from behind. I'm not going to show him like full above head. I'm not going to show him like directly from the front because those angles aren't necessary to the story, right? You can see, uh, let's see if I have it over here. Uh, wait, wait, no, more, yeah, no, this is, this is a good example. 
these angles are really only what's necessary. I could have shown this angle from any angle, right? As opposed to full frontal. I could have shown this from any angle. I could have shown this from every any angle. But the fact the fact of the matter is, this is the angle that communicates what I'm trying to say um, as, as best as possible. I think a many, many artists or many comic book artists when they're really starting, and I am also really starting, but I'm aware of this, and that is that you don't want to have panels um, with crazy angles that do not add to the story. Um, and, and I feel like a lot of comic book artists, well, amateur ones, they think that they can put all these crazy angles because they'll make it more interesting. And what they don't realize is that the more crazy angles you add in there um, without any purpose to them, the less interesting it gets. Because those crazy angles will have a purpose when you need them. Let me show you. Uh, this angle here is, I guess, would be kind of crazy. Um, and that's, and it, it's not even that crazy, but he is revealing some information here that's a little bit uh, more dramatic. It kind of puts some drama into the story. And that is why it's at a more of a crazy angle. Right? I'm not going to show something really plain like this guy saying, oh, at like the super dynamic worm's eye view angle because it wouldn't add to the story, right? It would just distract from the story. And having a lot of angles that kind of do that distracts from the angles that really matter because the angles that you really matter when you go do a crazy angle it no longer has the same effect so you really want to pay attention to that it's good to have like kind of plain plain camera angles right so that you can then get to the interesting ones like here this is the same scene as this right it's the same nothing has changed nothing you know it's the same same picture it's two people standing down on the table but because I went to the new page and I went to show that they had a deep connection of, not a deep connection, but they had a connection of some sort. They were like interacting with each other or were going to. I changed to the angle that was more dynamic because it made it more interesting, right? But as soon as I didn't need to have any interest, like I didn't need to be interesting anymore, it went to a very basic angle, right? And you can't have every angle on 100% because it, then it just gets kind of boring. And uh, yeah, that's basically that. So I chose this above angle because it's Adrian looking over at uh at at bonzo his name is and he's like looking over at him so i kind of decided to uh visually show that he's looking over and it kind of gives you the feeling that you're adrian even though it's not from adrian's viewpoint it kind of gives you the feeling that you are adrian eavesdropping on bonzo because of the way it's structured the very next one here is these are very basic angles like i said again nothing important nothing crazy is happening here so you don't need to show anything crazy, right? A another good thing to do with your choice of uh, your choice of frame is to remember that the reader um, isn't always the reader is also trying to follow along the story too. So it's always good to have for one thing a nice background that shows what where where you are. Another thing too is to pull out from the from the drama, right? Because the reader is reading the story, so they don't always need to be directly in the drama, right? When you pull out from the drama. You are showing that they exist in a world apart from themselves. You show that these characters aren't just these individual characters. They're actually existing in a world around them, right? And that creates a deeper sense of environment, a deeper sense of, of understanding and caring for the world when you feel that the world is you know, as important to the characters as the characters are to it. Now, it's not happening consciously, obviously, but all of these little subtleties create an effective, you know, uh, effective picture that really communicates well. If I didn't have a background here, or let's say I, or I didn't have a detailed one, it would really be weird to look at. Or if I kept having all these front view, you know, you know, subject-based pictures, it would be kind of boring because there would be no variety. So when you pull out, you kind of give like a breath of fresh air, and you can pull back in. And here I kind of pulled back in more intimately than I had done before. So it's imagine that. Imagine zooming in and out when it's necessary in a camera. You, you want to show the interesting stuff and kind of pull back when it's not as inter not as interesting because you don't need to you know really be in the drama. Uh, another thing too is to keep in mind the middle of the panel. Now I didn't really show this that I did it better in another panel. I'll show another video. But here uh, there's a the middle of the panel is where the most important stuff is happening, or at least the reader assigns the middle of the panel as the most important spot on the panel, meaning that. If whatever is in the middle of the panel gains most of the focus, right? And if you really keep that in mind when you're placing figures in a panel, because then you can really assign, as you can see I did here, the the most important things to the middle of the panel. Now I could have had these characters uh, walking right here. I could have had a person like maybe walking right here, but they would have been too close to the middle and would have distracted from the characters I'm trying to uh, show in the story. 
So really be aware of what the middle is doing. Another thing that too is that the middle kind of shows distance too. So uh, this character is going to cross this middle distance to get over there. And that's what the middle kind of helps do. It kind of sends the character um, over there along with this diagonal angle that I chose, which implies movement. So little things like that you want to pay attention to because they really help the panel. I could have shown this like a straight on, like maybe straight overhead. They're like in this direction. It's like duh, they're right there and they're right there. But it wouldn't be as interesting and it wouldn't portray the image as well. Here, another, like I said, it's a more of a, you know, interesting angle because what he's saying is that he, he saw one of the pictures that they had and that uh, he had returned a camera to them and the camera had some pictures of them doing some like not like you know sexual stuff but they were doing some like illegal stuff and and it was like you know telepathic technology stuff that they weren't supposed to have so he saw one of the pictures and now he's like super duper intrigued and he's letting them know that he saw one of the pictures and it's kind of a a pinnacle <laughs> of my story uh, in, a, in a way even though the story wasn't crazy you know dramatic it was kind of a pinnacle point that he saw one of the pictures and then here, like I said, normal angle. And that's really it for this video. That's really one of that, what I wanted to show you. So in summary, uh, you really wanna pay attention to what angles you're using and what the angles are doing for the story. So front straight on angles, they kind of stop action, especially if there's a figure there. If the figure is straight on, what it does is it flattens out the scene in a way and kind of stops all the momentum. Because no, you're not moving this way and you're not moving that way, right? You're only moving, you're moving you're not moving at all apparently when you're looking straight on because the, there's no motion in the comic book so it really stops the action another thing to be aware of is your cropping right how much of adrian's face do i need to show here right i probably didn't even need to show his nose but it, that doesn't matter as much but really show the parts that really matter um, and don't really show the parts that don't matter because it's not necessary you only have so much space on the page so really make sure you're picking the things that uh, help the overall story remember too that the reader's orientation or the reader's uh the reader's the way the book is, uh, the way the reader is accustomed to reading affects the way they read the story. So if all my panels have characters moving in this direction, it sends a quicker pace across the page because the reader, if in Western society and used to reading Western books, um, they're used to reading things in this direction. So, you know, it's kind of like getting on a treadmill that's going left. You're going to go faster left if you're walking left. But if you're getting on, a, if you're walking left and you get on a treadmill going right, it's going to stop you immediately. You're going to like, whoa. Right? So that's what's happening when you send characters in the opposite direction than the direction that the reader is accustomed to. They're used to moving in this direction. They hit this one. They stop a little bit. Even if for a second, it still matters. Remember too, uh, things that are big are important, you know. Use, 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 you know, and make it, make things important when they're, make things big, zoom in on things that are important and uh, zoom out uh, to kind of give some contrast. So it's kind of out, uh, it's in here. You can see it really well. It's out, in, out, in, out. Now it doesn't have to be as, you know, rhythmic as that. That just happens to be how this page is layered, but do keep in mind that that helps the helps bring all the re it helps keep the reader in the story because they're they're kind of going in and out of the scene and they're it, it keeps it more interesting it keeps it more alive than just having a bunch of simple uh plain uh panels like i've seen many comic books many manga where it's just like the same character's head over and over like not the same character but like the the majority of the manga is basically uh characters heads like like barely even bodies and i'm thinking i don't want to read this like it may have the most interesting story in the world but if i'm flipping through the pages and all i see is characters heads like looking left and looking right talking to each other and not much anything else it is extremely boring i'm like i don't want to read a comic book where all i see is characters heads purely visually that's just going to be unappealing so i won't even pick those ones up so that's what you're trying to avoid make vary the vary the the distances so you so you can avoid that head structure head shot thing um, two, remember balance and composition. So here you kind of want to pay attention to composition a lot. Um, what compositions really do to a scene? What do two characters of equal size do to balance out a scene? How do these characters? Um, these characters are immediately, you know, associated with one each other, with one each other, with one, with one another. My bad. <laughs> They're immediately associated with one another because of this equal size in the scene and equal distance, right? They're immediately going, okay these people are obviously going to do something or else they wouldn't be showing and I wouldn't be showing it if they had nothing to do with each other. Number two, only use angles that matter. Only use angles that are essential to your storytelling. Don't do a page of crazy angles if it doesn't help the story because then what it does is it really distracts from your, uh, your moments that really do matter and the moments that you maybe want to draw somebody doing a flying blazing kick at a rocket ship 
you know, if you had all your panels like super angled out and then you do that one super angled out, it wouldn't be as awesome. But if all your angle, if all your angles were relatively normal and then you build up to that big crazy moment, then it's like, whoa, that was insane. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> Uh, last but not least, oh, another one too, a, a, a subtle one is remember, keep in mind you can visually illustrate the ideas. You know, think of creative ways to visually illustrate um, what you're trying to see, uh, what you're trying to show. Remember, Adrian is looking over at this guy, so try to keep, like, think of a cool way to show Adrian's looking over, maybe through a camera angle, you see, as opposed to just showing, you know, any other angle. Remember to zoom in and out of the scene, show the world around them, uh, get your backgrounds up so that you can show the world um, and you can show uh, the characters are existing in a place and they're not just you know floating around in nothingness. Those head, those head manga where it's only heads, it kind of looks like these characters aren't even in a world because all you see are heads. It's like there's never any backgrounds really. So that, it kind of takes away from the whole effect. So like I said in the last video, the exercise I'm, I'm, I'm going to ask you guys to take away from this today is to like find your any comic book that you really, really enjoy and really look at it and analyze like, okay, what does this angle, what does this angle do to the scene? What does this angle, you know, do for the scene? What does it take away from the scene? Uh, maybe the panel structure is different. Maybe the, the, the curves and use like a crazy dynamic uh, panel like that when somebody was doing maybe a flying kick at a rocket ship, you know, and how does that panel structure affect the way you're reading it? How does the how does the the artist you know use how does the artist use these types of things basically to tell the story very well? So pay attention to the angle, pay attention to the actual panel itself, and pay attention to the zooming and the cropping because those will really tell you what the the artist was trying to communicate with that scene. So this is really it. Uh, I'd like you guys to comment down below any comic books you think really execute on this very, very well. There's a couple ones I have in mind, like Gantz or uh, Naruto uses uh, scene or angles very, very well when in action scenes. They have a really, really good use of angle in action scenes. Um, well, he, Masashi Shimoto does. And you know, plenty of manga and, and comic books in general are really good at doing this. So what are the comic books or comic book that you think executes on this very, very well? And if you can, Find what is a comic book you think doesn't do this very well, or what are some some things that you think really bug, or what are some things that really bug you when you're reading a comic book and things of that nature. So, really hope you enjoyed this video. Give it a like, give it a thumbs up, give it a subscribe. Give me a subscribe if you really enjoyed and want to see the other three videos I'm gonna make um, about this series. And uh, yeah, I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching. And this is Scorch Artist. Peace out, and see you soon.